folks, it's Miss Sayer here in the classroom and I'm here to talk to you this week about what's next for Survey of Science. Now is a really great time to think about what kind of science you're most curious about and what kind of classes you might want to take in the future. In each of the next few videos, I'm going to highlight biology, chemistry, and physics and show you some ways that you can explore that topic at home. This first video is all about biology. Biology is the study of living things and it's one of my personal favorite branches of science. In today's video, I want to show you how you can identify some different plant and animal species that you haven't seen before right here in our own ecosystem. The best place to do this is at the beach, so let's go on a field trip. Got my assistant Ralphie helping me out on the beach today. During summer vacations, I work as a beach naturalist with the Seattle Aquarium, so I have spent a ton of time on our Puget Sound beaches. But almost every single trip, I see a new species. So my mission today is to show you some of the species that I find, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to spot a new one. The species here are adapted to their specific environments. At the top of the beach, we're going to see species adapted to dry places like these plants and this golden retriever. When you're first starting to look around a tide pool, it might not seem like there's a ton of animals to spot, but if you look closely, there's lots of evidence. Sometimes people see these gray things on the beach and think that they're garbage, but these are actually egg cases of an animal called a moon snail. Another piece of evidence you can find for moon snails are these shells. If you see these shells with a perfectly round hole in them, that's usually because a moon snail has eaten the creature out of that. Moon snails usually bury themselves a few feet underneath the sand, so we don't often see them, but this is what they look like when they do come above the surface. We're used to seeing sand dollars that look like this. These are actually skeletons or dead sand dollars. There are live ones though. If you find a dead one, you can usually see some live ones. Living sand dollars have a soft texture and they almost look like they have fur. These tiny hairs are called cilia and it's basically what the sand dollar uses to move around. If you look closely, either here or in person, you can sometimes even see these little hairs moving. Guys, it's an exciting day because we found a sea star. If you see them on rocks, you don't want to go picking them up because it can damage their feet. But this one we can pick up because it's just stuck to the sand so we won't hurt it. If you see a sea star that's on the sand, you can gently flip it over and take a look. All these feet here, these tube feet are called ambulacrulae and they help it move along and stick to surfaces. You can even see how it has this seaweed. It's holding tight to it right now. I'm not gonna pull it super hard because I don't wanna damage its feet. The center of the sea star is where its mouth is and so its feet will grasp onto things that it wants to eat and then move it towards the center where it can eat it. Sea stars look pretty squishy, but they actually have these spines and they feel pretty rigid to the touch. When we go to identify this in our field guide, I know I'm going to look in echinoderms, which means spiny skin, because I can see right here that it's got this spiny outer skin. If you pick up a species at the beach, always make sure you put it back where you found it. Just as we were getting ready to leave the beach, I saw something that I'd never seen before. Usually when people see these kinds of things on the beach, they think that they're some kind of sponge or maybe a fungus or even litter, but these are actually a kind of egg. I thought that maybe these were sea lemon eggs, which is this animal here. It's a kind of sea slug, but we weren't sure. In order to find out for sure what this is, I ended up emailing my friends at the Seattle Aquarium who have more experience than me identifying eggs of the Puget Sound, and they let me know that these eggs came from an animal called a bubble snail. The scientific name for the snail is Bulla guldiana, and it's a species I had never even heard of before. If you ever come across a species that you can't identify using a field guide, it's always okay to check with an expert. Even biologists do that. This was a great day at the beach and we met our goal. We found a species that we had never seen before. I love learning about different animal species, but don't forget that we also live with a lot of amazing different kinds of plants here in the Northwest. You can study literally thousands of different kinds of plants just by walking out your front door. 
To show you some of my favorite kinds of plants, I took a stroll to a park that's just a few minutes away from my house. As you head outside to start finding some new kinds of plants, a great tool to have with you is a Pacific Northwest Field Guide or Plant Identification Guide. There are lots of online versions of this that you can find as well. I picked up some different plants on our hike here, and in order to find out what they are, I have a couple of different books I can use. Field guides can tell you what different species are with pictures and descriptions. You can also use something called a dichotomous key, which has a little bit more information, but can give you very, but can give you very detailed scientific information about each species. One way to get started is just by comparing the appearance of the plant that you see to pictures that you see in the book. After looking at all the different kinds of ferns in this book, I've identified this one as a sword fern or polystichum munitum. I can read all about where this plant grows, a description, and get lots of other information about this plant. Another tool you can use is called a dichotomous key. To use a dichotomous key, you answer a series of questions about the plant's characteristics, and it ultimately leads you to the correct identification. Are you ready to start exploring some biology on your own? Here's your science quest. Get outside and identify one plant and one animal species. You shouldn't even have to travel that far outside your own front door to find plants and animals, but if you have a chance to go to a local park or beach, now's a great time to do that as long as you're safely social distancing. See if you can use a field guide or the internet to identify the scientific name of your plant and animal. It could be a species that you're familiar with, but bonus points if you are looking closely enough to find a species that you have never seen before. By completing science quests, you can continue to improve your grade on the 21st century skills standards. If you want to reassess on any of the standards we covered this semester, make sure that you fill out the section at the bottom. Remember, reassessment does not mean retaking a test. I'll take a look at your notes and we'll come up with a plan for you to prepare for a reassessment and show that you're ready.